Good morning. My name is Sharon Sabota, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Um, I have a drumming exercise that we're going to do with some of the teenagers in just a minute, but I see that they have walked outside, so I'm going to just pivot a little bit. Um, so when Reverend Leslie asked me about speaking today, a time that happens in the Catholic tradition, it happens to be lit. And um, I always think about what we can give up and what we can do without. It also happens to be a time when she planned on addressing the themes of International Women's Day and capitalism. These are all things that I really care about. Um, so I couldn't say no. And I also didn't know how it was going to fit in everything. But I'm going to do it. Um, because there's, it's, it's such an important time. And so one of the things that happened for me as I was preparing um, in my day job, as many of you might know, I'm the director of a center for women and and um, I'm a, let me try that again. I'm the director of a center for women and gender equity. By the way, I'm going to turn on my timer to make sure I stay in the amount of time because I'm going off the cuff a little bit today. Um, so it's the busiest time of the year for me in that job. And I also work at KPFA as a producer. And it's also the busiest time because I have to produce a special International Women's Day um, audio document documentaries. This year I said, you know what, I can't do it. My girls need me, I'm really busy at work. And they said, well, we put you down. So either you can do it or it won't be done. So I did it <laughs> and it was due at 10 o'clock today. So I'm gonna actually just tell you um, the things that I'm covering are so illuminating to me that I'm gonna tell you about a couple of the women I learned about in this process. So I ended up being voluntold to cover a story last week, um, introducing or interviewing the producer of the film 100 years from Mississippi. And it's the best thing that ever happened to me, and you should all see it, is coming to the Bay Area this week. It's about a woman named Mamie Wang Kirkland. She died at the age of 111. And she carried the trauma with her for many years of witnessing lynching. She saw them in 1915, and she went back to confront them in Mississippi and confront that history she left behind when she was 107. Now her son, he's her baby, he's 72, and he produced this film. Um, and so I, I've just been so in awe of this story. And when I talked to her, I couldn't talk to her, sorry, when I talked to her son about her, I asked, like, what is it that, that kept her going? A couple of things. She lost her husband at the age of 55, but she didn't focus on her loss. She focused on the fact that she had him with her for 30 years and five days and 16 hours. She didn't count what she didn't have. She counted the moments she did have. Then that's when she went to the workforce. She became an Avon lady, and she wrote all of her orders by hand until she died at 111. Now, when she did that, she sat and broke bread with people and stayed and had coffee with them for hours on end. The other thing that she did, she drank coffee every day. So I learned from this. Yeah. And she ended every night with ice cream. Yeah. So there you go. And the other person that really struck me recently is Bonnie Johnson. If you saw the movie Fruitvale Station, she is known as Grandma Bonnie. She's Oscar's grandmother. And during the film, um, there was a scene where somebody called and got directions on how to make fish. Now, that's the version of Oscar that she wants you to know. Now, she credits her longevity to a couple of things. First is acceptance and forgiveness, because otherwise, she says, it'll weigh you down. So if you have nothing else, have those things. And then she has this really simple formula called DEER. Drink water, eat as healthily as possible, maybe include some ice cream, exercise, and rest. So I think that's pretty amazing. Now, um, she, she thinks she's still got another good decade and a half left. Mamie, on the other hand, she has already moved on. But her story is going to continue to live on in the stories that her son is telling. And I think that's something that I want to call on us to do. The act of sharing stories, listening to each other, engaging with each other, and being present in the moment. That's the other thing that Mamie was good about, being present all the way up until the end. That is what makes us whole. That's what matters. And now when they transition, they'll, they'll, others will continue to carry their rhythm. On that note, I'm going to invite a couple of friends up to the front. I'm looking at my clock here. It, OK, I'm going to go as quickly as possible. Um, I have a couple of people who I voluntold, but they agreed. Um, they're going to help carry on a rhythm circle. I've got my own daughter, Delilah, and a couple of the volunteers. And if I could get anybody else who would be willing to come forward and grab a drink.
spectrum, or somebody could deliver one to you. I'm going to have you all participate. I see somebody watching us, maybe. <laughs> um, come on over. Okay. Um, okay, so you all will have to see each other. And I am going to have you all help. One of the people I interviewed, Tarana Burke, the founder of Me Too, says we have to take what we have and make what we need. So what we need right now is a rhythm, and the rhythm is going to be this. I'm going to have my drummers help, but we're going to go one, two, three, four. I need everybody. One, two, three, four. Everybody's going to keep that beat. Then I'm going to point to them.